You hear the terms all the time. Demand, supply, inflation, value, market, market equilibrium, interest rates. You hear them in the news, on social media, and in finance forums. They're everywhere. But do we truly understand them is the question. Most of us quietly skip those conversations because these concepts sound too complex or sometimes too academic. But here's the truth. They affect your everyday life, your profession, your savings, earning, your purchasing power, and your future. On this channel, I'm breaking them down for you clearly, simply, and even weekly. From national income to international trade, from price to value, from demand to supply, we'll uncover the real meaning behind these big economic ideas in a way you'll never forget. Click the playlist titled Money Talks Economics Made Simple below. Please hit subscribe and start your journey to becoming economically informed and financially empowered. Because here is the thing. When you understand how the economy works, you understand how the world works. Today, what I'm going to talk about is a concept that is always in the news. You've definitely heard it. It's everywhere. The concept is called GDP. GDP is rising. GDP is falling. But what does that truly mean? Can it make you richer or poorer? What's the real deal behind those big numbers countries boast about? We keep hearing, uh, you know, in the news that this country is the richest country in the world in terms of GDP, or that country has now become the fifth largest economy in the world in terms of GDP, or this country, another country, despite being the second largest economy in the world in terms of GDP, has a very low GDP per capita. All this could potentially get very confusing, overwhelming to the point that you are driven to move away from the topic. Stay with me till the end, because I'm going to reveal not only what GDP and GDP per capita mean, but also how debt, wealth, and other indicators paint a much fuller picture of a nation's true economic health. And if you are curious about the economy, personal finance, and building your financial IQ, make sure to hit that subscribe button. This channel is your shortcut to understanding the money world without the jargon. So let's address the first question. What is GDP? GDP is gross domestic product. It is the total monetary value of all the goods and services produced within a country's borders in a given time, usually a year. It includes cars, food, services, software, housing, construction, other industries, etc. Think of it as the country's annual economic output or income. There are three ways to calculate your, you know, calculate GDP. Uh, you have the production approach, the income approach, and the expenditure approach. Imagine a nation as one big company. GDP is its total revenue for the year. What is GDP per capita? It's GDP as defined above 
which was the total monetary value of all the goods and services produced within a country's borders in a given time, usually a year. So that number divided by the population. So let's say, hypothetically, uh, a country's GDP is $1,000. And it has 100 people living in it. Then GDP per capita is $1,000 divided by 100, which is $10. GDP per capita averages the output or income per person. It helps compare the standard of living across countries. So simply put, if a nation's GDP is a pizza, GDP per capita tells us how big each person's slice is. So now, which is a better yardstick? GDP or GDP per capita? Frankly, both are important to consider and evaluate because they both evaluate the strength of the economy and its people. GDP is, a, is an effective indicator uh, to gauge overall economic power, but it does not reflect individual wealth. GDP per capita, however, is great for comparing living standards, but it can potentially hide income inequality. So let's look at the top GDP nations and their corresponding GDP per capita. Uh, our source of this information is the latest estimates from the IMF, uh, World Bank, uh, and GDP is mentioned in trillions of dollars, which is United States dollars. So on the top of the list is USA. Uh, its, its GDP is $28 trillion dollars and GDP per capita is $84,000 per year. China has $18 trillion and GDP per capita is $13,000 uh, in the year. If you look at the list, India ranks high in GDP but much lower in GDP per capita. That's why both the indicators are important. We cannot also neglect the importance of debt. A country with high GDP but even higher national debt can be economically fragile. Debt to GDP ratio determines how sustainable a country's borrowing is. Think of it like this. If GDP is your income, national debt your credit card bill. High income helps but huge debt weakens your position. So debt is also a very important yardstick. There are some other indicators and I'm going to mention them. Uh, you have the inflation rate, which is rising prices that reduces real value. Unemployment rate, which is that of jobless population. Current account balance, which is your imports versus exports. You have the human development index, also called the HDI, includes life expectancy, education, etc. And then you have the Gini coefficient that measures income inequality. These help get the real picture beyond the GDP. So in conclusion, the question to address is why it all matters. Yes, GDP is powerful, but it's only part of the story to understand how countries really perform and how that impacts your life, we need to go beyond the headlines. So stick with this channel as we break down economics for real people. Uh, if you found this useful, like the video, share it and subscribe for more real world finance and economics insights on a weekly basis. In my next video, I will go back to the basics in explaining what is economics. I'm going to describe its role and its different branches. So till then, 
please stay tuned to my diverse world of Amon perspires to inspire. Thank you.